what's going on guys? Welcome back to Nostin Ball. Uh, I took filming too many vlogs recently. Uh, welcome back to another video, guys. Uh, today, I'm going to show you something uh, pretty cool that I just found out how to do in Open Rails or MSTS, whichever game you're using. This should work in Open Rails and Microsoft Train Simulator. It should work in both. Um, so today, I'm going to show you guys how to um, basically get an engine, a shape file that you don't have a shape file to. So basically how that works is usually when somebody puts out a model, you have to have a shape file for that model. Now what I'm about to show you completely disregards that. It um, basically you're taking a model, another model's shape file and putting it onto the model you got and making it work. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. And uh, we're, as an example, we're going to show um, one of the ones I have here. This, like this MRL right here. I don't, I didn't have the original shape file to this one, but I now have a shape file for it. Um, meaning, like I took another locomotive shape file and made it work with this one. The textures. How it works is the textures, it's all involving the textures. It has nothing to do with the shape file itself, it's just the textures that we're going to be modifying and all that stuff today. So, I'm going to show you guys how to do that right now. Okay, just for the sake of time and stuff, um, so what you're going to want to do is go into your train set folder, your train simulations, and then find your... Um, your thing right here, your uh, train folder. And what you're going to want to do, see, this one I took, um, I don't have it right on hand, but I went ahead, what I did was basically take SP SD70M 9808, I believe, 9808, 90, 9808 or 9809, one of those two, I can't remember which one, but I took one of those shape files, put it in here, you don't, and then renamed it to the um, same thing as the ENG file. Okay, so you probably already did that. Um, so now what you're going to want to do now is basically, if you have the texture to the original shape file, great. Because um, that's going to be very important uh, to get the name of the original sh uh, texture file for your shape. So like for this one, uh, we this, this file belongs to an SP locomotive, a Southern Pacific. Um, and um, so as you can see here, I have SP, SD70, okay, 9809, and then A and B. Now, the trick for this is you can just take the, just one of the original names, I would suggest A, and then you can paste it into the A part of the texture, and then, um, you can ex and then paste it into here and just change A to B, and then uh, before you do that, before you um, uh, do this uh, renaming, I'd suggest you duplicate the textures, um, like you see here, SD UP SD seventy M forty four fifty eight, same shape file. I recommend you duplicate the textures first. If you have like a um, a multi, like you got. Like this, your model came with like utilities and B parts and stuff. I'd recommend you um, duplicating the original shape of. Why do I keep saying shape? You want to duplicate the original texture file, and then before and then after you uh, duplicate your texture file to your shape file, bring in the um, or to the name, then bring in your shape, um, name it to the ENG file, same thing as the ENG file, name it. That's what you're going to name your shape. Then, you're going to want to take your duplicated um, texture files for your, um, with this name right here, and you're going to want to name them the same name that belongs to the shape file itself. So, what I did here was I renamed the texture files to SP, SD70M 9809A and B, and that's Pretty much all it is. Now, keep in mind, um, you may have some instances where there'll be some textures misses. 
Why can I not speak? There'll be some instances, probably, where you will have some missing textures, like some parts of the engine may uh, have black spots. Um, what I'd recommend for that is, like, right here, um, as you see, there's um, two SD70M windows. I, I was too lazy to delete, <laughs> to delete the uh, original. But um, you're going to also, like for the windows, for example, if your windows render in uh, black, they don't, they aren't see-through, um, I recommend you take the windows, the window texture from that shape file that you just imported. I want recommend you take that windows um, texture and paste it in, into here. Um, and then you should be good. So that's pretty much the... About the simplest way I can explain it to you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. And let, let's take a look at the SD70M that I have. Okay, so like here. This is what it turned out to be. A perfect SD70M. Now, you might have some flaws. Like, like that. But, pay that no mind. Because, not like anybody's going to be looking at the top. Especially if you're going to be using these for um, rail fanning. Uh, mo you can't, it, nobody's going to really notice that, the small errors and stuff, like, uh, the, man, I'm trying to level this thing, like the small errors, like in the handrails and the, uh, grab irons, that's got a little bit of a texture error, not sure how to fix that, um, but yeah, this is an act, this is the SD70M, using the Southern Pacific shape file that it did not call for. I think it called for the um, ATSF SD75M, and with that, you would have had to do all kinds of um, shape editing, and not a, not everybody has a program to uncompress the shape file, edit it, and compress the shape file, and make it work. Not everybody has that program. So what this does is eliminates that problem and allows you to basically get yourself a locomotive without going through all that trouble. Um, saves whole, it saves a whole lot of time, and it 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 works. Now keep in mind there may be some locomotives that may not work with this method, but basically other than that, most locomotives, most do not even, most if not even all will work with this method. But yeah, I just discovered this today. I thought I would share this with you guys. Um, concerning that I may, I know that there may be some of you guys that play Open Rails or MSTS and basically don't have a way of getting s stuff like this. Um, so yeah, th the, this video should eliminate all your problems. So... Yeah, if you guys found this tutorial helpful, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Um, ah, um I can't. <laughs> ah, my throat's a little dry today. Um, so yeah, guys. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and yeah, I really hope that this uh helped a lot of you guys uh with problems with uh like stuff like what we discussed, and yeah, like. And like I said, um, this won't work with everything, but it will work with the... So basically, the way I would suggest it is get, like for an SD70M, you have to get the closest resembling shape file to an SD70M. It's like get the closest one you've got that looks just like this. And basically do the method with it. That's what I would suggest the most. But yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this new video. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And yeah, guys, I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.